Hello everyone, welcome to my Module 9 assignment video slash memo. Um, this module we be, will be exploring performance assessment, about which most of you should be familiar as we have had two performance tasks in this course, the discussion boards and the selective response test. Uh, your test was on another performance assessment, the EdTPA assessment handbook. So that's three performance assessments you've been exposed to. Um, you have readings, Chapui and Stiglin's chapter seven, which is on performance assessment, uh, Andrade's chapter, uh, Andrade's article in the service of learning, uh, which uh, an article on creating rubrics with your students, uh, and an Edutopia video on the five characteristics of project-based learning. There's also a presentation by me, which um, is a, I did a, a couple of years ago. Um, so there's some outdated stuff in there, but um, I've, I've highlighted in, uh, I've made comments on the transcript where those changes would be not a big deal. Um, you should have completed revising your select response test. Again, I will not close uh, this DB so everyone can take the tests of their classmates. So please check back during the week. Uh, <clears throat> so so you can take the tests of any latecomers. And there are always latecomers. <laughs> they will not be able to complete your uh, three-part analytic summary without results. Um, your final revision uh, will be uploaded for grading by me in module 10. So you need to upload it there. I will not be looking at the revised select response test DB to try to find your revised test. You have to upload it so I can grade it, module 10. Um, the discussion board and observations, conferences, interviews, etc., will be open for another week. Make sure you have at least five response posts with citations to support your comments in at least four of them. <laughs> um, and if, you, if you're adding a web-based article, make sure it's relevant. Um, I, um, someone added one on observations and it was teacher observations and that's not appropriate for this course so um, we, we want student observations so that, that's appropriate for a administrative course and this is not that. Um, our discussion this week will be a modified one. Uh, only timeliness of the initial post and number of responses will be counted. You're going to create a rubric using the exemplars I posted to describe four levels of quality. I only want four. Uh, the graphic display of your results, that's part, part of it, a, a chart, a table, etc. cetera. Um, a description of what you would need to do based on those results, whether, you know, reteach, uh, have small groups, move on without doing anything. Um, and three insights on the test creation process. All three, port, all three parts are supported with citations, need to be supported with citations from the course. Um, so that's a overview of it, of, the re, of what you're going to create a rubric on. Now this is going to be a work in progress and as we go through the two weeks of this discussion board, you'll need to read Chapui and Stiggins, pages 226 to 233, and Andrade's article, where she discusses the very process that we are going to do. You need to look at the exemplars and create a table. We've done that uh, before. We've uh, created a table. Some of you created it and uh, used the table function in can Canvas. I don't like that. It doesn't look good. Um, it doesn't uh, transfer well to a mobile device, which I do a lot of my uh, commenting on uh, my phone. Um, so I would recommend taking a, doing it in Word or Pages and then taking a picture of it and then uploading uh, the picture uh, into your discussion board post. And then it's going to be evolving. We're going to make comments. We're going to look at each other and say, I don't like that. This sounds good. Um, I'll be commenting on it as well, uh, trying to guide you into making it clear. Um, so this is a, a, a process that we all should be able to familiar with because making rubrics that are specific, uh, that have specific criteria, that uh, have student-friendly descriptions of that criteria, um, 
you know it it uh, you'll see if you watch my video um, that I talk about some of the rubric creation web websites uh, that talk about general qualities good organization well what the heck does that look like <laughs> um, so uh, that that's what we're going to be doing is we'll be open for two weeks um, make sure you have four levels of quality and that they are non-judgmental like you know, avoid terms like excellent, bad, poor, you stink. <laughs> Only kidding. Um, you know, and you can use several names I'm, in my rubrics. I use advanced, proficient, um, beginning, emerging, uh, uh, basic. Uh, so um, use uh, labels that aren't judgmental, that are going to be hurtful. <laughs> so. Um, this will be a process where your rubrics will grow during the two weeks. Uh, the discussion board is open. Make comments on each other's rubrics. Revise your own and put, post them back. By the end of week two, we should have some pretty good ideas of what a quality three-part analytic, uh, what the <laughs> three-part three analytic survey looks like. Uh, and. Um, I'm not going to change the rubric now because I can't because you know what's in the syllabus has to it's like a legal document so I can't change it but I, I will definitely use uh, what we do in this uh, discussion board to uh, modify it uh, in upcoming uh, courses so that's it I'll talk to you next week